So there we were, sitting at a table with my aunt and uncle, whom I didn't even know existed only a few minutes before. So surreal. Funny thing is, I had no issue believing everything they told me. It sure sounded complicated, and perhaps I almost understood why my parents had never told me about them. Understanding didn't mean I liked it, though. There was an anger rising inside of me, but was temporarily muted by curiosity. Kradek, my aunt, was telling me about my mom when... This is Nidak, my adventure, written down in a better way than I can tell it. Episode 26 Family and Foe Nidak listened in stunned unbelief. No. She believed everything her supposed aunt and uncle were telling her. Stunned. She was merely stunned. Her parents had never told her about any family. They'd always claimed all relatives either lived too far away or were dead. She'd never pressed them for information, which felt silly to her now. In the modern day and age of Earth, being far away shouldn't be an excuse not to communicate with others. In a way, they hadn't even lied. The family had been farther away than she'd ever think possible. She kept her anger from before on a simmer, a low, burning fire. By the time she reached the bottom of the bowl of soup, she knew the summarized history of her aunt, and why Nedek hadn't heard of her before. Krydek had given the heirdom to her younger sister, Nedek's mother. When she was seventeen, they performed a ritual to officially transfer the coming succession. She'd moved out of the castle with sufficient funds to start a new life. Nedek wondered why she couldn't stay but a mouthful of soup prevented her from asking it out loud. Craddock talked right over her anyway. I travelled around and saw the world. Years later, I came back here with Stetem. She pointed her head towards her husband and gave him a slight smile. We bought this mansion. By then... Most of Parallelo's population had almost forgotten about me, which was what we wanted. Everyone was doting over your mother as a next heir. She and I had always stayed in touch, secretly. Do you want more soup? Nidak nodded. Before the servant could grab Nidak's bowl, Kitty jumped off Nidak's lap and cried a loud and panicky meow. He stalked around, sniffing at places, his howls getting louder. Guts, he needs a toilet. Do you have any loose sand areas outside? Nidak stood, but Steetum gently pushed her back down by the shoulder. I'm on it. You should listen to the rest of the story. He grabbed Kitty's lead and guided him away. Kitty sort of followed Steetum. Your mother and father got married while I was still away. I heard it was a lovely wedding. I wish I could have been there. But that's what I chose, wanting to be away from all attention. Either way, Maida confided in me they had trouble getting pregnant. So much so that they turned towards old myths and legends. She stood up and took something from a drawer. The servant came back with the bowl refilled with soup. Here is something you can eat after finishing your soup. Her face held a mysterious and mischievous smile. She held out her hand, palm down, and dropped something on the table. A small box, rectangle-shaped. Frowning at Craddock, Nedek slowly slid it closer. It had a simple mechanism for opening the lid. The 
gorgeous aroma of chocolate wafted toward her, overwhelming every other smell. Sweet, earthy, faintly nutty. The chocolate was shaped like small triangles, stamped with a lighter square in the middle. Nida couldn't resist and popped one in her mouth. The rich and deep taste of the cacao was too much. She rolled her eyes back before closing them. The initial bitterness lingered while a sweetness overtook it, perfectly paired. By far one of the best chocolates she'd ever eaten. When it was all melted away, she let the bliss take her a bit longer before opening her eyes. Chocolate helped them get pregnant with me? Perhaps I should reconsider my chocolate-eating habit then. She muttered at last, not wanting to insult with her desire to not get pregnant. Her aunt laughed. It sounded so much like her mother's laugh. Goosebumps spread over Nadek's arms and her eyes welled up. She blinked it away before Crydek saw it. Now that would be something. Crydek's glee was still obvious when she resumed her talk. No, if one is in certain circles, one would hear about the myth of Earth. It had always been a legend talked about in the Isho family. Maidak somehow found the way to skip there. She brought me the secret to make chocolate. That's how you, I grounding recognize you. You're an Adex burning employer. That either explains the grounding lot or makes it even more burning strange. Craddock's eyes opened wide. So did her mouth. Close your dripping mouth. You look like a burning fish. Neda couldn't help but snort at that, despite her surprise at both Patat's appearance and his words. He recognized her? You, you, you. Yes, yes, dripping me. Steedham came in with Kitty. Craddock slowly turned her head towards him. He looked at her, frowned, and dropped the lead when he saw Patat hovering in the air behind Nadek. Gorwak. That's a Gorwak. They're real. They were my favorite mythical creature. Them and dragons. Nadek felt a mixture of guilt for not having told them yet about Blackie and anticipation for their reaction when she told them about her. She exchanged a few quick telepathic sentences with Blackie to make sure she was all right. Blackie seemed to be more concerned about Nadek than herself. Kitty sauntered towards Patat, who landed on the floor to receive headbutts. I've told you about our childhood friend Gorwak. Craddock narrowed her eyes. You never believed me, did you? She huffed. The indignation was muffled by the way she looked back at Patat. She rubbed her eyes. You had a childhood friend Gorwak, and was this Gorwak? Craddock answered Nerak's question with a nod. Nidak sighed. That was too much of a coincidence to be a coincidence. Steeton walked in a daze towards the nearest chair. Burning right it was this Gorwak. But that sat next to Nadek. His head barely came above the edge of the table. He furrowed his forehead and gave Craddock a meaningful look. She jumped up from her seat, strode into another room, and came back with big blocks of firewood. They lifted the seat up for Patat. He reached out and pulled the bowl of soup towards him. Kitty jumped up, lying down on his lap. 
It made eating more difficult, and it couldn't have been comfortable, but Tad being only a bit larger than Kitty. He allowed it anyway, and stroked him while eating the soup in between talking. Nida grabbed the little box of chocolate, content to eat those instead of the soup, musing over how wrong she was about thinking Patat only ate grass and leaves. This is good. It's been too long since I ate hot food. Human food. Fifty-two years since my brother ran away with you. Nadek's aunt had a faint smile on her lips, remembering childhood memories. He only told us what he did afterwards. We never... Wait. Nidek had to interrupt. She had to. Brother, I've got an uncle too. What else? Do I have a lost sibling somewhere? Is the uncle still in the castle? Is he the king now? Before she finished her sentence, she already knew it was a stupid question. She knew well enough who ruled Parallelo right now. Oh, no, he has passed away. Don't be sad, it was years ago. He was supposed to be the heir, so when he died, it came to me. I already told you what I did with that. When you were seventeen... Nidak mumbled, trying to piece things together. It was all a bit confusing. Craddock nodded. Your mother was your mother was fifteen at the time. She still had thirteen years until the wooden water crown would appear on her head, but she was already ready for it. And you know, she actually got the crown while she was far into her pregnancy from you. The wooden water crown. That had been part of Wiley's ridiculous titles. Page win. Nidak paused when Steedham uttered a small growl. Craddock's face fell into a careful neutrality, which screamed disapproval in its suddenness. Yeah, so Page win. he has a crown now, right? So is he a cousin? How is he related? A smoldering heat in her aunt's eyes replaced the neutrality, emphasized by reddening cheeks. He is a fool, a puppet, put on the throne by usurpers. He is not related to us at all. Nidak's sigh of relief felt like a betrayal to her aunt and uncle's anger. At least that was one less thing to worry about. Not that it mattered much anymore. Her head already spun from the complicated family history and hairdom. He doesn't have the wooden water crown yet, Stedham said right on top of Crydag, who continued. The wooden water crown only appears on the head of the person most suited to wear it. That means the first descendant of the Isho bloodline, when they turn 28. Or, if they're not here at that time, or they aren't heir anymore, then it goes to the person sitting on the throne. But that has actually never happened, as far as I know. It all fell in place, partly. Nidak's birthday was in a few days. If she was in the other realm then, the crown would fall on her head. If she wasn't, or dead, the crown would go to Whiny. But why would that mean the end of Earth, like the Zlurp had said? She had a suspicion. What else happens when someone gets the crown? They get full potential of the squares, triangles and lines. Nidak bit back a curse. The full power of the magic. With the wrong intentions, that might well become the end of a world. 
You have been listening to Nadek, Chapter 26, Family and Foe, Adventured, Lived Through and Narrated by Myself, Nadek, Written in a Better Way Than I Can Tell It, by Astrid Jeff. Don't go just yet. We've got bloopers coming up. Find us on Twitter at Astrid Jeff and at Nadek and Kitty. If you like this show and would like to support it, a good way to do that is share it around to everyone you know. An even better way is to rate and review it on iTunes or whichever podcatcher you use. Don't forget to follow the show or subscribe. She knew the summarized history of her aunt. <coughs> By the time she reached the bottom of the bowl of soup, she knew the summarized history of her aunt. Aunt? What? By the time she reached the bottom of the bow, Crydek had given the hair dome. Crydek had given the hair dome. Before the servant could grab Nadek's bowl, her face held a mysterious and mischievous, a small, the chocolate was. If one is in certain cycles, you. <coughs> I told you about our friend who. I told you about our girl. I told you about our girl who... What the fuck? You had a childhood friend. This is good. <clears throat> Which screamed disapprovement. Disapprovement? Disapproval. The crown would go to whiny.